Welcome back, Canaanites. Today we'll be looking at how to fully unlock the Halo Wars timeline. When you first get the game, be it the original or the new Definitive Edition, some events will be available from the start, but most will need to be unlocked. There are two major steps in unlocking these entries, the first being the only black boxes found in each campaign level. The first black box is found near the end of the first mission. Before going through the shield door into Alpha Base, take a Warthog just south of the bridge you just crossed. Under the bridge is the first black box, and depending on various factors, you should unlock the first timeline-related achievement. The second black box is found behind a shield to the northwest of the map on the second level. Hugging the left side of the map, you'll find the shield. Send some marines through and grab the black box. The third black box can be obtained at the very start of the level. Take a grizzly just south of it to find an icy path to the left. Follow it to the end and you'll find the black box. You could also do this at the end of the level with any unit, just make sure you do so before delivering Anders to the LZ. The fourth black box is found just north of your landing zone. You can't miss it. The fifth black box can be found on your way to the crater at the start of the level. Just before the area with the reactor in it, you'll find a set of stairs. Have a unit descend them, and you'll find the black box in a semi-circular area near some cover. The sixth box is found where you place your third rhino, the one that you have to airlift to. A small path just west of that area leads straight to the box. The seventh box is found in the northeast section of the map, not too far from one of the Super Scarab power nodes. If you find the node, just head a little further north and you'll find the black box among a bunch of resources. The eighth box is found not far from the first encounter in this level. After clearing out the initial brutes, but before going to recover the lost elephants, have a unit take this path off to the right. You'll find the black box at the top of a ridge overlooking the area where the brutes once were. The ninth box is found on the western side of the map. The easiest way to get it is to make a hornet and fly north along the western edge. You'll soon find the black box. The tenth box is located in the northwest edge of the map, right where you save a group of marines and an elephant. As soon as you save them, claim your prize. The eleventh box is found on the northwest side of the Spirit of Fire. Use a hornet to claim the box. The twelfth box is located in a similar spot on the ship. Northwest side, just a bit closer to the reactor that you're trying to fix. Use a hawk to claim it. The thirteenth box is located on a hill, near the third Covenant base you encounter not far from the second teleporter. Air units are best for claiming it, but any unit can make the climb. The 14th box is found in a hidden path southeast of the first Covenant base you encounter. After climbing the first hill and taking out that Covenant base, you can see a small path just to the south. It's said you can get infantry in there, but I was forced to make a hornet in order to claim this box. The 15th and final box is not far from the interlock directly opposite your starting base, as seen here. And that's it for the black boxes, but not for the timeline. To completely unlock it, you must now finish a series of skirmish matches using each of the six leaders on each map that originally launched with Halo Wars. Note, not every map, just most of them. The complete list of maps can be seen on screen right now, and found in the description box below, in the order they appear in the game menu. However, here's what I did. I started playing as Cutter on Blood Gulch, game set to deathmatch against an easy AI Cutter. In the match, I spawned a bunch of Warthogs and rushed the enemy base, easily securing the kill. Rinse and repeat while playing Forge on Chasms, then Anders on Perth Outskirts, both against Cutter, on easy, playing Deathmatch. I then switched over to the Covenant leaders. Same setup, but when playing, I spawned a Temple to spawn the leader, spawned some units to help him out,
but used the Covenant leader power to ultimately obliterate the enemy base and force. For me, it went Arbiter on Release, Chieftain on Tundra, then Regret on Beasley's Plateau. From there, I just played each remaining map as Regret, using the same settings. It took about half an hour or so to unlock the remaining timeline events this way. When you're finished, you'll get an achievement letting you know, and you'll be able to view the complete Halo Wars timeline. The timeline feature included with the original Halo Wars, and now with the Definitive Edition, is one of the coolest ever featured in a Halo title. While terminals and audio logs can go a long way to add additional context to a series of events, few do so on the level that the timeline did. The Halo Wars timeline adds context not only to the events of the game, but the universe as a whole, from the origins of the Spartan 2 program, to the start of the war, to events known and newly revealed that led to the events of the original Bungie trilogy. Many have asked for a Halo Codex to be included with future Halo titles, and the Halo Wars timeline is probably the closest we've gotten to date. With any luck, we'll see this feature return in Halo Wars 2, if not in some future Halo title. Well, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you liked this guide. Until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.